Hey there, YouTube. I mean, Kitsu. This is the Kitsu Times. <clears throat> hey there, YouTube. I mean, Kitsu. This is the Kitsu Times. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to a little bit of Endless Space 2. So we're continuing along with our look at the Vultures. And we're looking at their sort of mid-game here. Now, we are in a pretty peaceful position because we haven't really bothered anybody. Sort of the obvious thing politically. And uh, we've sort of got ourselves spread out across a pretty wide area. But you'll notice that a bunch of these planets have these little icons here. That means these places have portals. And that means that once I start working on getting a fleet at Mira, which is where we'll probably start building one, I can sort of move it around anywhere that I really need to. Now, we've only gone for the sort of higher quality places there. We'll probably get Trappist as well, but we'll probably leave Lupus alone because it doesn't have any good resources. Um, Oyera, Virgo, and Airy, um, these are all interesting systems and I might pick one of those up there. We do have uh, eight potential colonies right now, but I'm thinking that we'll probably go Trappist just because antimatter is a much more guaranteed required resource. Now, we are getting the Intergalactic Technology Center. Like I said, the AI does not go for wonders in this game, unlike in Civilization. Even on endless difficulty, they often find them to be a bad proposition. So we're going to go ahead and hit and turn there and get access to that wonder there. This is going to be a really, really powerful bonus if you're going for a science victory. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good for uh, what we're doing here. This is a good planet for it as well. It's a pretty decent amount of science uh, to begin with there, 622 science there. Could go for the Graviton Shielded Labs, but what we'll probably do is get the Denark University just because we should probably get that eventually. We are rolling in enough uh, titanium now that we're sort of not worried about the rate at which we're getting that anymore. Um, we're just doing pretty well as far as that goes. We are going to want Geneocrat to capped out pretty soon here. And we are going to want to eventually, well, pretty quickly work our way towards resource scanning. Plus 5% science per strategic deposit on systems everywhere. Really, really powerful for you. Plus 10% science per strategic bonus on uh, deposit on system for the system that you're governor or that you're actually in. Also very powerful. So that's really what we're sort of working towards here. Um, also getting access to beam counters is pretty good as well. Plus 16% to a bunch of resources, especially on a system that's going to have Denar uh, Denark Academy and all of our other wonders and stuff like that. Going to become very, very powerful. Um, let's go ahead and get all our stuff built here. Down here, we're... Probably just going to do this. I probably do need some more portals. I probably do need to think about getting some military. The thing is that, uh, realistically speaking, we're not under threat currently, so that's why we've been sort of holding off on that. Um, for technologies, what we want to do at this point in time is switch over to just getting our science victory. We're no longer thinking too much about uh, what we're going to be doing um, other than getting that sort of uh, science victory there. So anomaly frameworks I quite like here, so this is a uh, potential option there. Um, there are things like these lunar suburbs here, which are kind of okay if you've got lots of moon slots there. The deep atmosphere habitats are also potentially good if you've got loads of uh, gas plants for some reason. Hyperfolding, I don't find you generally need to use this. Um, I don't generally think that hyperfolding is super necessary. Ontological reverse engineering um, nullifies the effects of negative anomalies, which is really quite good, and plus two science and plus two on cold. Pretty powerful one that we probably want to go through first. Now, ultimately, what we're really trying to get access to is Genius of the Endless. Um, the thing is that we do probably want to unlock uh, at least one more of these, just so I can also unlock the other texts over here. Um, and we probably actually want to get some of the Tier 4 stuff there as well, potentially. We'll grab Maximize Exploitation, and we'll do that first here. It's only going to take us the one turn. But, yeah, what we're sort of doing at this point in time is really trying to get access to that bonus there. Um, all right, I kind of actually need, like, uh, to maintain our happiness because that's what science is. Unfortunately, that hits our construction speed, which is pretty bad. Now, all of our plants have been upgraded to level 2, which, you know, is pretty quick with this faction. We have got lots of titanium, like I said, so we're not super, super worried about that resource there. Uh, we are going to be getting um, these resources, so I am going to, like I said, it's worthwhile getting some of these things in this tier, so we're probably going to worry about just uh, getting at least a couple so I can have those resources. You could also do something like um, autonomous mining early, but we don't really have the time to be doing that right now. So we'll just get those two things there. We do now have... Um, okay. Uh, well, I've already put a plus... So I'm going to do this. All right. All right, so we do need to think about, like... Um, I said some defenses here, so we can go ahead and start looking at some ship designs here. Um, and we're going to be going for a predominantly energy-based build. I've been finding lately that uh, there has been 
really no reason for me to go for kinetics uh, in most builds here. Uh, it's just not been um, the situation that they've been useful. Uh, I'm not really sure what it is. They might have nerfed them or something like that, but I find that uh, pretty much every case here, you want to go for more uh, energy weapons for damage dealing. Not sure why that is. Again, it's just it is the way it is there. Um, this is fine as our build here. We could be using something like the Smart T Repair Bots. Those are actually pretty powerful, but uh, that's more of a defensive slot thing here. All right, let's go ahead and look at the Trakar. And we're going to be giving these guys the uh, unstable slugs. The reason that this is going to be good, of course, is that it's... Well, actually, we could also go for one laser. The reason that these lasers are good is that they'll fire it at the offensive ships, and then when those offensive ships are hit by it, they'll lose a little bit of um, accuracy with their energy weapons. So if they're going energy weapons, this sort of counters that, and this counters the missiles. I'm probably a little bit more going to just shut down the missiles here. The reason that I find them unviable right now is that they seem to get completely shut down by enemy... Um, point defense, which is not what it used to be. It used to be that you could get hit by some uh, of the some of those missiles and still, uh, or you could be using missiles and you could still get some of them past point defense, but it doesn't seem like that's the case currently. Not going to do too much of the uh, titanium uh, things just because those things cost a lot of resources that I don't want to be sending. We're not invading people, so the titanium A2S slugs are not necessary. Um, things like antimatter lenses, obviously never really that reliable or that important, but we will go ahead and grab one of these. Alright, so we'll apply that as our design there. Lots of weird resources required to build these things, just uh, so that we've got them available to us if we want to build new warships here. And these systems down here are just going so quickly in terms of like how fast they're constructing stuff. I don't care about you. Sturbia up here. Alright, let's grab this. We're starting to run out of population slots here. And uh, I think we had another population type here. What did these guys have on fertile? There's no fertile plants here. I could ship these guys off somewhere, honestly. Have we got uh, free fertile plants anywhere? Not, not really. Um, I mean, I could get Zeturbia their portal, because I was saying that they could probably need one. And then I can ship them off anywhere really quickly, so that would be fine. Alright, we're going to continue supporting the ecologists. I just happen to like this first tier ecologist uh, boost that we're getting. We'll probably lose them pretty quickly, but uh, for now, just keep supporting them. Try and keep them online for the law that we uh, are enacting, which is the Green Fertility Bill. It's just sort of a decent boost if you're um, colonizing plants that have lots of anomalies. Alright, this place is going to take a little while to grow, I suspect. Um, and these guys have bonus on anomaly. We've already got uh, plenty of anomalies here, though, so let's uh, go ahead and grab ourselves probably the AI labor here. Yeah, I think AI labor. Pretty much helpful on every planet that we've got here. I do have access to some terraforming here. This would be a lot less science, so not really that worth it thing about terraforming is that, well, actually what I could do is exoscience stations. And our food production on the system is actually not that bad. So we can probably keep keep going here with uh, what we got. Alright, next turn we'll have access to the NARC University. That's going to be a nice bonus there to our science. Um, that's lovely. Alright, and over here on our capital, well, let's get AI labor. Anything that you turn into production can later be turned into more science, so it's not actually a bad idea to really focus that down. Um, we'll go ahead and grab this just because we're running out of space here. More gashy down here. I could go ahead and grab more colonies. Antonov rings and seismic activity is a pretty weak combination. The Lost Cities artifacts compensates a little bit for it. I think we'll go ahead and grab these. Once we get predictive logistics, these things will be useful. So, uh, one of the things we are doing is also getting a lot of these uh, like Budokai bunkers and uh, tractable armaments. That's mostly because we got access to sim camps in this particular playthrough. And that also helps our production, and also is good, you know, to have extra defenses and stuff like that. Let's see here. We got one hot planet. We got one sterile planet. This will be pretty okay, especially because these seem to be our populated plants for some reason. I'm not sure why the steps one isn't. Could manually fix that, but uh, that's not a huge concern. 
Now at this point in time, um, I'm making most of my money off of luxuries sales. So every time that these things go up in price, I've been sort of selling them in the market there. A lot of them are not that expensive anymore as a result of me selling a lot of them, but uh, that's probably okay. We'll eventually even be selling like our excess Hyperium, which is one of the reasons as well why I'm going for Hyperium weapons. Um, okay, so what have we got access to? This tier, this tier really nothing that effective. Uh, you could get like native recruits or something like that. You could get really anything that you want there. What I could potentially also do is get access to um, level two of clerical corrections if I feel like I need happiness, but it's pretty weak even for that. I think ultimately what we'll probably go for is something more along the lines of just um, like resource scrounger for a couple levels just because it'll fill in slots. Like there's this is sort of a dead level for you. You could also go for a dust catalyzation, but it's such a weak ability. All right. So yeah, we're probably going to start seeing some people who are going to start wanting to fight us pretty soon, even though we're deliberately going out of our way to not meet them. So I am going to want to start building up our military in just a little bit, and that really does slow your growth in, in, in how much science you're gaining. Um, like, you should be just sort of steadily, quickly gaining science just from populations when you're playing this game. But if you're focused on building your military for too long, you end up sort of losing that ability to do that. Um, you also end up losing, of course, all your dust and stuff like that. So you have to be a bit careful about how you're planning that all out there. All right, so Terbia down here, it is uh, it is what it is. 90% happiness, so we'll go ahead and grab an infant supermarket, uh, tractable defenses and stuff like that. Uh, could go with interplanetary um, transport networks. I think this one gets us a little bit of uh, better production a bit faster there because it's plus four for everyone on this planet there. Yeah, it should be higher than the Budokai bunkers. All right. And like I said, the bunkers are only getting us extra production because of the uh, sim camp that we got down there. All right, so I feel at this point in time, we might as well just wait till we've got maximum um, bonus for our colonization. I'm not really in any sort of hurry for a lot of this stuff here. 87% uh, happiness, this should get me another, I think five. Not a great amount of extra happiness. I can never remember if it's per deposit, but um, we'll check out in a second here. Pretty sure it's by deposit. Yeah, so we actually got a lot there. Our, this is really bad. Okay. This is the reason this is really bad is because we already have a scientist, so I can't really get another governor of a different type there. I'm gonna go for the technologists. Yep. Okay, so it's a free colony. I don't care about the free part. I'm just gonna go for maximum. Ah, no, actually we'll... We'll colonize now, I guess. Uh, we'll chuck this guy down here. Technologists have relatively good science bonus, if, if I recall correctly. I'm probably wrong. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Geniocrat, they've got access to. And they've got access to Expedition Management. Expedition Management's actually going to be really, really powerful for us in this case. Ooh, Farming Logistics. Where I've thrown him, that's actually going to be quite useful because this system does not have food. All right, still ecstatic. So this planet, this system is doing pretty okay here. Um, I think what we do is just get the pelvis production here, get the money um, a little bit more secure. And we could probably do the same over here just before I start building too many warships because once you start building a ton of warships, you end up in that situation where you just don't have any, any money. Okay, I don't really care about movement. We're waiting to colonize, and uh, by the time this cooldown comes off, we'll be fine anyway. Definitely this planet is the starting one here. I'll probably actually want to terraform away from Toxic, just because Toxic is just a little bit too negative, with, as far as I know, no real redeeming qualities. Level 2 City is our first thing here, as per usual. And Micro down here, Meeker, Meager, I don't know. Let's get AI labor. Let's actually do geo industrial first here. All right. And I am getting gamma absorption, so I do want to pick up either Airy or Oyera, potentially both even. Theoretically, it's possible, but actually getting both of them would be a little bit weird. Okay, down here. Um, Probably something like the AI labor would be pretty good. 
Where most of our population is, however, is this uh, Murgash 4, so that wouldn't necessarily be that useful. The interplanetary transport network would be a bit stronger. Just because, again, the planets that we're actually colonizing. Um, can go ahead and colonize this as well, I guess, pretty soon. I don't know. Sim camp, I think, be the, the stronger choice for right now. Our fleet here, getting pretty big here. Uh, we'll go ahead and sell this ship, I think. We don't really need it. But uh, yeah, these uh, now that we're sort of getting these medium-sized ships, they're just a lot stronger. I don't want to be paying too much upkeep for too many different types of ships here. All right, drone networks and the Cerebral Reality, get those uh, started there. Get the interplanetary, or Xenio Industrial, rather. All right, and we should be gaining a decent chunk of uh, antimatter per turn here. Getting seven per turn. Um, we do probably need to boost that a little bit, but mostly because we're going to be turning this into a luxury resource. All right, so at this point in time, I feel much, much more secure about just going straight for these sort of things here. Um, probably go for Anomaly Framework. Like, we're skipping an entire tech tier, and that is pretty stupid in some ways, but it works out pretty well here. This is one of the ones that I find is really variable. I generally don't like getting Battlefield Archaeology just because it doesn't come into play in a lot of situations. What I probably am going to want to get here is either Interstellar Windshields, because um, it's quite a lot of extra population potential. Especially on interesting plants like uh, the Deep Atmosphere Habits, uh, letting me get the most out of Pocket Labs. Um, the other one is Super Light Aerodynamics, where it's just movement points on ships, but I think we'll go with this one in this particular case. It's gonna, like, you're gonna have to sort of make it your choice based on the situation that you find yourself in, um, to some extent there. Let's do it this order. Alright, we got ourselves a bit of a military fleet here. It's not strong yet. Um, but we will sort of get that uh, sort of built up in, over time here. Let's go ahead and get actually a few more warships. We'll build another pocket of three ships over here in Hidel. They'll keep them busy for a little while as well. We're getting some more pulvis stuff here to keep our income at a reasonable rate here. Okay, apparently no one just showed up there, which is just luck it comes down to. There are some um, things you can do to make, it sh make sure that no one actually does that, but... It's not consistent by any stretch. Uh, let's grab a portal here. Portals start to get pretty cheap later on in the game there. They start off kind of expensive though. All right, over here we'll colonize these guys because we've got the, actually no, that doesn't help at all. Let's get the uh, predictable logistics first, I think. And then given what our planet over here is like, we probably actually want to get the microwave um, pipes over here. Just get a lot of uh, good stuff there. Over here, I think we can go ahead and start working on things like our magnetic uh, field generators, research labs, graviton, just the basic sort of science stuff since we don't have really anything else going on there. Anytime you've got a planet where it's just uh, sort of not really doing anything too impressive there, you just sort of get anything that produces science. Like over here, we'll just get this because it produces science. I love how it looks like these guys haven't even colonized there. I'm pretty sure it's because I haven't actually had line of sight to there in a while. But I love how it looks like it hasn't got any signs there. Oh god. Everyone keeps hacking everything. Alright. Um, for this guy here, we probably just go with personal militia. For now, it's not my favorite, but... And over here, we'll just do resource grandeur again. After that, we'll probably just reduce cost. Actually, I should probably... Yeah, well, we'll do that later. I should probably have done this one. Plus 25% manpower capacity on Empire is actually really useful for these guys. It's one of the few instances where it's actually really good, especially if that person is going to be on Senate. Pretty much guaranteed. Actually, what's the system like for happiness? 93%? Let's also get this. Let's do it first. Just got to keep our happiness up at like 100%. And I've got an event running that's keeping my happiness higher than it actually is, so... I um, want to make sure that we're not going to get dumpstered in terms of happiness in any second here. And at this point in time, like, realistically, you kind of run into a bit of a rut in terms of, like, things that you can actually do that are kind of interesting. Because you're sort of just waiting at this point in time for the um, point where you're basically winning, like, where you sort of won. Um, and that's not really necessarily like a terrible thing, but it's not necessarily my favorite thing, which is why I like more aggressive games. 
Um, the sort of turtle science kind of thing. Not necessarily hugely my style, but it can be interesting. Um, we got pretty lucky in that we've managed to avoid being detected by other factions, which uh, does not always happen. Um, by now, like, there's a decent chance there's someone like over here or something like that or over here that might be fighting us. There's some people over here that could potentially have like gotten pissed off at us if we'd been exploring around, which is why I'm not leaving my borders. Um, normally, this would be a bad idea, of course, but like I said, it comes down to the type of uh, game that you're playing there. Um, let's grab this thing just because I have like very little influence production here. Um, I can actually afford potentially another law here. Victory gardening, uh, not really necessary in our particular case. We can do things like brains over bucks now, but I think dirty hands act would be kind of a little bit better. So let's do that. Make it so that all the buildings we're building are a little bit cheaper to build, and it doesn't cost that much influence. Okay, I really need to add in some uh, add in some bloody firewalls here. All right, um, let's go ahead and grab this just because we uh, no not on this planet actually. Let's build another fleet of three ships there. We'll eventually want to just start producing money, but uh, we'll actually want to produce science, but uh, we don't have that option just yet. And about to get ontological reverse engineering. We do this first because it automatically upgrades any of your existing science bonuses there. Um, so for example, if we went to Kurha over here, this is an exoscience station here. Uh, once we get ontological reverse engineering, it or, where, where the hell is it? It'll automatically switch us over to the uh, citizen science bonus, so it automatically increases that, which is a pretty nice perk. Um, I don't have to pay the sort of production uh, cost for doing that. All right, uh, we're probably gonna go efficiency aficionado here, I think. I don't think he's in a hot system at all, though. I'm pretty sure we chucked him down here in Zoo, which is a cold system. Um, could throw him down, we could move him over to here, I guess, but the other bonus is better for science. Um, all right, I guess we got stuff to do here. Let's just go ahead and throw some some of these guys into public 3D printing. Um, there's no particular reason for this. It's just going to keep us uh, busy while we've got uh, other things we've got to do. All right, this planet on the other, this system on the other hand needs some stuff done. All right, um, each of these is going to provide us with more production, so we're just going to go ahead and colonize them both, even though I don't really want people living on those. And Trappist over here, um, let's just colonize that for now and then get predictive logistics, I think. All right, we are starting to lose a bit of money here. And the major reason for that is, well, probably ship, um, ship costs. All right, went back up for some reason, but. All right, let's merge these guys together. Someone else has won 10 battles. I think I've won like zero. I'm not even sure if I've dealt with my pirates. All right. One of the other reasons it probably went back up is because of uh, this planet doesn't calculate until after I hit end turn. So yeah, each of my ships is like 70 in terms of how much it costs for upkeep. So they're pretty expensive. This is the reason why it's not necessarily a great idea to rush to get fleets. All right. Over here, um, microwave pipes isn't really that sensible yet. Uh, what was the upkeep cost of this building? I cannot remember. I don't think it has any upkeep cost, but I'm gonna find out I'm wrong later. All right, and now we have got a little bit of room for colonizing. Let's move this guy, I think over to Airy is what we'll do. This gas planet is actually pretty good for us uh, just because of the weird stuff that we're doing. The fact that we're going to soon have a lot more stuff on it, um, and the other worlds are not necessarily great either. In fact, none of those worlds are actually great, but it's the one that we're going to get. All right. So we've increased our production by like 40 over here. These planets can be pretty safely transformed in Arctic here. That would increase um, quite a lot of stuff for us, and this place is pretty damn miserable. You can only increase the happiness by 10 with luxuries lotteries, so um, we can increase our happiness by 10 here, and that'll sort of increase as time goes on because we'll end up with more and more people on those planets. Um, luxuries lottery is something we also probably want pretty much eventually, but we do the best we can with what we got, I think. 
All right, we're just about there. Grab this here. Next level, we get the uh, big science boost, which is what we're really after. And over here, pretty happy. We can go ahead and get another 15 happiness or something like that. The more important number is this one. This one's actually dropped down to loyal. We can get another 15% dust and science if we go back up over 85% which is why I'm so constantly fiddly with uh, trying to get more science, more or more happiness, more happiness, more happiness. It's kind of tricky actually to make sure that you're getting enough of it. All right, grab a little more influence. It's not gonna be that helpful. This guy's not great for planetary governor, but he's okay. He'll eventually also give us the plus, uh, plus 5% or plus 10% on the planet rather. All right, and down here, um, I mean, we could try to change this Arctic world into either steps or a snow planet, but this planet's already pretty okay. Arctic is actually kind of already fine. Just go ahead and public 3D print for a little while here. All right. Right. Um, probably want to get that, get this first, and let's just double check, are we over, we're down all the way to 73%, that is brutal. Alright, so I'm guessing that we lost one of our um, event things that was increasing it. Alright, Kurha over here, absolutely bloody miserable. Um, I can actually increase our happiness by a decent amount by moving these guys off of these planets temporarily, but I don't think it's that important right now. Could actually change this one to Arctic, which would increase our happiness by another two, but like I said, these planets do produce more science by a decent amount. Let's switch this over to Citizen Science as well here. Um, this gets us another 10%. We're basically running like to get 20%, which is not that much, but... It is what we can get here. Dell over here, also not that happy. Let's see. There's a lot less I can do about this system being unhappy, in all honesty. Uh, I can start countering these negative anomalies, however. So that should increase our happiness by a little bit here. Not a ton. Well, it should actually be a decent amount. Micro down here. This place is going to be tricky just because these plants are so um, negative here. Let's go ahead and uh, reduce the polar tempests. So that'll give us another two happiness per, but the planet itself is like minus eight just for the planet type. Um, transforming it to a desert, a lot less production. Probably not that important for me to have that much production on this planet anymore though. Um, so we'll probably actually transform this planet here. I don't know how you have tempests on a, on a lava planet to begin with, but also like why that wouldn't sort of counteract some of the unhappy. Maybe it's because it's blowing like hot lava in everyone's faces, I don't know. Alright. Still 76%. Yeah. Sometimes worth uh, losing certain other bonuses so that you can get access to um, some more happiness so that people are a little bit less whiny and complaining about some of these uh, problems that you're going to face here. But for now, let's just do this here. All right, a lot of stuff getting done there. Zoo down here, also not that happy. We can go ahead and grab our 10. Yeah, I kind of wish there were some better happiness buildings out there. There are some pretty good ones, but like even better than what already exists. Um, These plants, uh, this planet can benefit a bit from citizen science there. Unfortunately, I don't really have great places to send these guys, honestly. There's quite a bit of them now, actually. All right, uh, Trappist, did you have fertile planets for them to go to? Yeah, this boreal world is fertile. All right, we'll send these guys to Trappist. I'm not getting much benefit out of these guys here. So you guys... Trappist 1, confirm. And I've got a portal there. I don't have a portal on Trappist. They're right beside each other, actually. It's probably fine. Alright. Let's 
And then they'll sort of have to make the slow trip that way. That's fine, though. Um, I think we'll grab the pulvis production here. And we'll go ahead and grab off the last of these guys. Just because they're not really providing us any other bonus here. Alright, over here in our capital, drop down in happiness quite a bit there. Alright, and it's especially bad for this place to lose happiness because it's got um, the endless world. Alright, Norn over here, uh, efficiency aficionado. I think we send him up to Murgashi. Should increase the production by a decent amount here, just because that's all hot planets. Trap us down here. Let's get the portal. Let's start colonizing some stuff here. We don't want people living on those, but we do want to have them. All right, and again, we support the ecologists. All right. Just about getting our interstellar windshields here. Our Gosi can now colonize for free. And uh, we have got, yep, one more. Back up to Loyal. This place is down pretty badly. This will get us 10% happiness everywhere though, so. Let's see here. This is gonna be a weird freaking planet. All right. This interstellar windshields will help a bit too. Right, so we got like a population cap of two people, so that's fantastic. Let's go ahead and grab this here. I'm amazed at how much food is being produced on a gas giant planet, but, you know, whatever. Colonize there, colonize here, and we'll try and terraform both of those. Let's also grab that. All right. Losing some populations, vaulters on zoo. That probably means I'm not getting enough food production out of here. Yeah, I'm in negative food production somehow. That's strange. Um, hmm. Same food production on those plants. This one's got less, it looks like. Okay, so that got us back into positive food production somehow. But I do need to think about getting some more... Oh, I know what happened. I moved the guy that produced food away from there. He was producing quite a bit of it, too, so... Alright. Oh, Zaterbia needs something built. Um... Hmm... I think we just get the Miners Union and the Expanded Mines. Nothing too special about those. Down here. All right, now that we've got this changed to that, we've gotten this planet up to ecstatic. Also, that has a lot to do with other things. Um, could go School of Geniuses at this point in time in some places. It's not that useful on some of the systems because this has only got the one reduced thing. But, um, yeah, probably not enough planets have those sort of things for me to really think it's super worth it. Does this count as an anomaly? I don't think it does. Yeah, I don't think that counts for that purpose. Um, so in our particular case, I think we just go for these two things again. This system, on the other hand, Uh, has plenty of systems that are benefiting from reduced or negative. So this is going to be enough population to make that worthwhile. Power shams over here should be on a different planet. Let's see here. Ratios should be on the hot planet. Power shams should be on the sterile planets. Righto, that should be, should all be fine-ish. 
power shims on like sterile plants are actually pretty useful to sort of make use of those uh, those plants and the horatios here help a lot on hot planets as well um down here in zoo we've got no negatives no negative anomalies okay so the thing about like negative anomalies is that they do sort of eventually reach around being something useful I do wish that these things worked for like uh, the medium anomalies as well, though, instead of just reduced. Okay. Mostly need to be checking out these systems that have like this sort of stuff going on. Um, I should actually probably deal with the reduced magnetic field here. Because it's pretty much just all negative. All right. Now at this point, one of the things that's also pretty nice is that we do have a couple of these um, things in our border. It's always nice to get those. It just happens. It's not something you can really work towards or anything, but nothing wrong with that anyway. Alright, let's grab ourselves these basic science things here. Um, over there. Zoo. Yeah. And yeah, this is what our mid-game is going to be looking like for probably a little bit longer. I think that we're just going to continue on uh, doing some of this basic stuff here. This planet's too small for this to really provide tremendous amounts of anything. Uh, we'll grab it anyway, I think. Upkeep of this is 64. I'd be getting 15. Actually, so... Uh, no, it's definitely not worth it. Let's go ahead and specialize all our colonies here to do more of something I really don't need. Cool. I guess that gives me the ability though to just instantaneously slam out a bunch of ships. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll be back once we've gotten a bit further into our mid game. Okay, and we're back. So we've skipped ahead quite a decent amount, and unfortunately we're near the He Show, or at least they're the first ones who have found us other than the Unfallen. Uh, the Hisho are actually pretty militant, and they are probably going to try and kick our ass at some point in time. Fortunately, I have got a relatively okay fleet here, but this probably isn't keeping up with the trends here, so unfortunately this is going to slow us down a little bit. Um, we're going to go ahead and flush out our fleet just a tiny bit here, but yeah, most for the most part we should be, I don't know, probably okay. We are blazing through our tech really, really quickly here. We're already onto power armor, and... Um, we're getting these top tier techs done in like two turns, four turns, whatever. Um, very, very small amounts of turns, regardless. Uh, a lot of these I don't really, strictly speaking, need, but it is useful to get a lot of these. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the situation that we find ourselves in. Still worried about our happiness, it is dropping like all the time basically. So we might want to go ahead and uh, make sure that we're picking up happiness techs after this here. Something like in uh, cultural inverdicts could be pretty, pretty good for us here with the um, access to the well-being foundations. We're probably not going to be able to get autonomous administration, but we would get two um, extra systems from cultural unshock. So that's something that we probably are just going to pick up there along with dependency algorithm, algorithms and low temperature. Um, whatever, like those are not super, super important for us. The reason that we're switching to those is because we don't want to die. And, you know, like, that would be lovely. I technically don't even need this right now, since we're going to be delaying our science victory because we want to make sure that we're safe. Uh, that's sort of taking priority. It's going to slow us down a little bit, but we've been sort of blazing ahead so quickly that that sort of a delay is not really a huge deal. So planets uh, down here, pretty, like, undefended, but like I said, not strictly speaking necessary for me to do anything to defend them. Um, we are going to be just... Uh, a little bit probably too resource poor to properly upgrade all of our fleets once we get access. Oh shit, Horatios as well. Everyone's just like, hey, what's up in this section of the galaxy? And then it turns out it's uh, it's me. It's me up here. And theoretically, there's also the, uh, what are they called? But no one cares about them. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so this planet's actually pretty ridiculous uh, in terms of like the possible population that we can get on it. Um, I moved a couple of guys around here, so they're in looks like fine spots. But we can actually get a lot of people onto this gas planet now and get a pretty decent amount of stuff off these guys. Um, 
I think we'll leave that as is for now, though. Would like to set this to self-mining and NPO, though. Uh, we could even try to go for a little bit of growth here from epigenetic crop seeding. So that'll only take apparently even one turn. Alright, so that's fine. Producing science across like our backyard here and just everywhere basically makes it so that we can get access to what we need as fast as possible. We are losing a little bit of money right now, but uh, that's nothing to be worried about. If it looks like we're about to lose a little bit too much money, we can head over to the marketplace here and sell... Apparently the price for this changed, so let's go ahead and just sell like, you know, let's sell 600 of it. I don't know, it's apparently worth two point, uh, it's apparently worth 4.7 thousand, so that's lovely. Uh, has the price for this gone up? Yeah, that's actually a decent amount now. Sell all 100 of it. Um, this stuff we're actually using, so let's not sell that. Let's sell plenty of this though. There we go, sell all 25 of our gossamer since we definitely don't need that. Okay, cool. That's worth nothing, that's worth nothing. Fantastic. So yeah, we basically just sell down whenever we get an opportunity to, um, and don't worry about that sort of stuff. So that'll keep us um, in money for a long time. Even if we start buying a few things, we can probably be fine. I'm not gonna say we're actually gonna be good, but we will be fine. And we can even afford to do things that are a little bit reckless, like um, down here in the zoo, we're losing more population still. Um, are we actually, I just, uh, God damn it! okay, let's go ahead and do this. Don't really wanna have to get the stupid building, let's just also accelerate it. Having to babysit that stupid place is annoying. Um, hmm. Do I care about getting the pocket lab right now? We probably do. Let's get a little, little bit of a head start over there. I don't know, something like this seems kind of okay. All right, and uh, yeah, still it's just barely enough approval. This is why we need the text that increase our happiness. It's actually just, uh, we can actually just do this here. This system is gonna be absolute garbage for like a while. Uh, reducing Kessler syndrome. Yeah, this place is gonna have problems. Fortunately, this like core world here has got lots of bonuses, so it sort of cancels out. This is actually a really nice gas giant, um, which is weird. Usually their gas giants are pretty garbage. All right, low temperature construction. That'll get us another type of military ship that we need. And uh, we should be able to upgrade our ships now. And um, again, what we've got lots of at this point in time is we have lots and lots of the titanium Hyperium. So let's go ahead in here. We're gonna be focusing, we're focusing on medium ships this particular build. Um, I, I like adding in this third one here as the pinch beam with the uh, Hyperium because it uh, just does defend us a little bit. And then unstable slugs is perfectly fine for the remainder. Uh, you're gonna want to go ahead and grab a little bit extra uh, defense in my opinion here. Uh, in our case, we've got two shields, so we want two armors. This will make a pretty tough ship there. Um, yeah, this is looking pretty okay. I don't uh, know what I want to throw in here necessarily. They removed the ability to just like spam a whole bunch of uh, fleet accelerators instead of movement, so now I actually have to move honestly like a legit person. I'm going to do this so that I've got a bit more speed there. I don't really technically need speed since I can use the teleporters, but it's fine. Um, in any event there, let's go ahead and add in... Uh, we'll add in one of these here, make sure that's one of our large turrets. Add in, um, like the thing about this is that you don't necessarily need to have that many of the um, Hyperium based weapons. And the reason that you don't necessarily need too many Hyperium based weapons is that like you can only give the penalty once. So the increase in damage is not that high. 102 versus 89, it's not really necessarily worth it. Um, I wish I had the Hyperium um, intensifiers, that would be quite nice here. Uh, instead we'll go ahead and throw in a titanium um, thing there, we'll throw in another speed booster and not worry as much about our defenses with this ship design obviously, this is not really a tanky ship. And that should be fine. Alright, and uh, hopefully we can upgrade our entire fleet here, yeah it looks like we can afford to. And then hopefully we can also upgrade this entire fleet here. Looks like we can, okay. So these new ship designs should be pretty capable of keeping us uh, safe against um, an impending attack. 
should be relatively good at it. it won't be in all likelihood amazing at it, but uh, should be fine. Let's go ahead and get the epigenetics here. This place is going to also have problems with uh, food, so might as well. It took a while before I actually bothered getting the food production in the buildings because I didn't really need them that badly, as you can probably tell. Um, one of the things that I've been doing is sort of actually shuffling populations using my uh, capital. So whenever a planet needed more population, I just moved them from the capital there. The only problem with this is that if your capital is... Um, or if those other planets are already like uh, at the food cap, you can't really do too much with it. Um, let's see over here. Probably need predictive logistics and I probably need to buy it. Like I said, I can afford to buy some stuff. I can afford to sell some uh, more resources there. And we've got tons of Hyperium and Titanium still. Uh, this is a capsized fleet for what I've got right now, so the, I can't really get any better than this right now. I can add in one small size ship, but that's really not that beneficial. And I can also add in a hero ship, but I don't have any hero ships designed to be admirals. So I can't really improve too much on my uh, sort of fleet capabilities here. Yeah, I refuse that. They're going to declare war on me pretty soon. Um, Alright, let's go ahead and get ready to fight. Something like that. It'll take us a little while to get that all built, but it'll be fine. We're gashy down here. Should be also hopefully ramping up pretty soon. All right. And this stuff uh, that we're getting here is not, strictly speaking, important, but it does unlock our ability to get Genius of the Endless. This is what you're sort of aiming to get. This is our first real goal here. Um, this is a very, very powerful building in and of itself, and once you've sort of got access to it, you're going to be able to sort of zoom through a lot of stuff a lot more easily. Um, let's actually grab this here. This place could also do with some... Um... You guys are on the wrong planet. Alright, you guys up here, you guys down here, everyone on the fertile planet, um, as far as those guys go. And we'll do that as well. Okay. So I could do Shaft Shelf here, that wouldn't help a ton, because we've only got like the one Strategic, uh, and we've only got like two, we're only level one in this place here. This place needs a lot of stuff before it's really ready to go here. Uh, let's actually do Interplanetary first here, we'll chop that up to the top. The reason is that it'll at least get us a decent amount of production like really quickly for relatively cheap. And I just need to get that system up and running as fast as possible here. Um, this place is sort of fine as it is. We've also got access to the Dust Anti-Trafficking Center, which will help us a little bit with uh, dust production if I need it. But hopefully we're just not going to need it anytime soon. I hope I get an Ecologist here at some point. That would be lovely. Because I am trying to do this. Power to the people, uh, plus 2% per population types on systems. Which is pretty okay, especially because I've been moving populations around a little bit. Although I haven't really been diversifying. I've sort of been taking all of them and moving them all to a place where they'd be useful. So, you know, it's still not necessarily that great, but let's see here. So this planet here at this point in time should be able to produce quite a lot of science here. So we can actually throw in like maximum amount of people onto this planet without uh, the bonuses or penalties there. And it's producing a decent amount of science there. Not necessarily sure I feel like I need to actually do that though. So make sure you guys are on plants with strategics. They sometimes get moved around a bit. Um, this is probably honestly fine for right now. Um, yeah, these guys are just going to get increasingly and increasingly more pissed off at me. That's fine. Um, let's see here. We need about 33 people on a system before this is actually profitable. That's the problem with these buildings. You're like, oh yeah, it produces dust. That's the resource I need. And then you find out like you can't actually use it properly because the stupid game is just like, oh yeah, no, you're going to get screwed if you do that. Just FYI, except we're not going to FYI you, you're just going to get screwed. Alright, um, so this chap over here, let's uh, go ahead and do the plus 5 for luxury deposit um, bonus there. It's hopefully not going to be necessary, but this system should have the potential to become pretty darn unhappy. And now that we're producing a ton of extra stuff on our capital uh, to make us more poor, uh, we are going to be losing money probably pretty quickly here, so something to be concerned about here. 630 titanium though, so 
could be fine. Are gaining some ability to build more things, so I need to be careful here. This place is one of the ones that need a well being foundation. Although I have got the ability instead to build a uh, level 3 city. Let's just look for a good population here. Zaturbia might be a good call. Yeah, it looks like Zaturbia. Alright, and we'll grab that. Gets us actually a decent amount of money as well. And this is also going to give us a decent amount of money uh, getting Zaturbia up to level 3 modernization. What we've done here is we've chosen um, the uh, antimatter as well as the, what's it called? The ionic crystals? I think it's ionic crystals. Yep. So that's going to help us out a decent amount there as well. Um, someone must be using Gossamer. I don't even remember what the bonus for Gossamer is. All right. So we got like uh, quite a lot of turns before we go broke. Could turn off Dirty Hands Act pretty soon here. We're not really building any buildings. Well, we're building some. We're building enough that it might be worth it. Keep it up there. All right, down here, um, Urgent AI. Murgashi would also have been a good place. I think it's already level three, actually. So yeah, the problem with Genius of the Endless is that it does take quite a while to get it, but once you do, it uh, really speeds things up. Yeah, I've already actually got maximum amount of stuff uh, committed to preventing hacking, unfortunately, so I can't really pr improve that any. All right, it looks like your science must have gone up just a little bit because our Genius of the Endless only takes, uh, it's taking one less turn than it was going to previously. Fantastic stuff there. All right. So this place is turning into a steps planet. Um, it's going to be a lot, lot nicer to sort of colonize at this point in time. So let's get to work building some of the stuff we need. Like this would be pretty okay on a planet that's got both Behemoth Song and Talking World. Those are pretty decent. It's not actually strong enough for me to say that it's a great planet for me though. I'm still wondering where the food's coming from in this system. Um, luxury deposits, zero. Epigenetic crop seeding, it is. Okay. Fortunately, it is city level one, so that's where some of the food's coming from. Trappist is also looking pretty good here in terms of progress. I just need more antimatter. All right, and I have got enough that I can start making some of these systems happy again. We are down 83% again in terms of happiness. The system actually can get, uh, needs a lot of stuff built before I really can focus on that. But I think down here you guys are actually done. So pop in the Wellbeing Foundation here. That'll get us up to a lot higher, about 90%. The problem with these is that they take 25 antimatter per, so well-being foundations are an expensive way to increase your happiness. Can be quite necessary though. Alright, so our military has been like just massively improved. Got another full 15 stack fleet over here. It's not quite enough to round out a full fleet, but uh, if I feel like we are in a, under a threat, like we might be with this guy over here, what's this guy up to? Micra's losing population now. Micra or Micra? I don't know. Um, the system... Okay. I think actually we produce more food on somewhere like this planet. Um, we'll still go ahead and grab epigenetic crop seeding though. That should be fine. Alright. Yeah, so this guy is up to something. Could just be that he's up there because he wants to uh, harvest resources. But I'm going to warp a fleet over to Kurha anyway. Especially to wipe out uh, those scouts just in case. At this point, like my fleet should actually be strong enough to take out pretty much any realistic uh, threat from uh, these guys here. Let's just go ahead and hit that. He'll talk smack at me about that, but that's fine. Huh. Feel free to anger us. Feel 
uh, up yours. Showing up here with your ships and stuff like that. How dare you. Alright. And down here, uh, the system needed happiness pretty badly. It needs a lot of things really badly. Let's do the Cerebral just because it's really cheap. Yeah, the system really just needs the basics, I think. It's producing pretty quickly. I must have stim camps already. Um, should probably be hitting domestic surveillance actually in a lot of the cities that I've got, but I don't have the happiness for it. There is a button for actually checking like what buildings you've got in a system. I can never remember what button that is. I'm just not going to worry about it. All right. Something I don't actually often check, even though I probably should check it more often than I do. That's lovely Horatio, I don't care. Um, just hitting end turn here until something happens. I'm still expecting this guy to declare war on me. Build a couple more ships when he does, and be probably okay. It's better to have this sort of interruption of having to build military stuff later, but this is why you sort of build for production in this game. Like, you don't build under the assumption that you're going to be able to just build science early, because production means more science. Production means more um, science directly from this sort of stuff, but also means more science in that you're going to be getting your buildings done faster, which is also just a huge bonus in terms of getting your science buildings up and running faster. Because the tech to get like a science building that's really, really powerful doesn't mean anything if it takes you 100 turns to produce it. Um, like, so if you can produce the buildings really, really quickly, you not only have the ability to get those science buildings built quickly, but you can then build a military really fast. Mind you, the ships that you sort of are getting in the early game, if you're just going for like early game ships or whatever, they're a lot weaker, but they also produce a lot faster, so you don't have to get as many of them because your opponent's going to be weaker as well. It's lots of things that are sort of going in your favor, actually. Um, all right. Uh, Geniocrat or this? Definitely Geniocrat because he's on like all hot planets. Um, yeah. Feel free to anger us. Feel free. Yeah, he's going to potentially declare war on me pretty quickly. They tend to get pissy at anyone that's got a bigger empire than them, and since they colonize really slowly, they end up with uh, everyone being bigger than them. And then they get in fights they can't win. It's really weird. Oh, God damn it. All right, here we go. These are all all small size ships, and they've got like half the value of what I've got here. Um, yeah, they've declared war. All right, and uh, there is no way in hell that these guys are beating me. Looks like they've gone for all um, long range um, lasers, so we definitely do power to shields. Let's go ahead and take a look at this fight here. Kind of feel like cheesing uh, the AI a bit here, so let's go ahead and um, just go like this here. I don't necessarily need anyone in this row. All right. So he's put a whole bunch of people up here. He's put no one down here, so we've got kind kind of like opposite one another. I'm not sure he's actually got enough ships to put people in that bottom row. I might actually like. I can't remember if he's allowed to shoot me from the angle that he's at. Let's check our paths. Okay, so I'll be shooting into the back with this fleet, but um, he probably can shoot at fleet 2 the entire time here. I might as well watch this uh, from the this view here. I actually like this fleet view. Okay, we are getting some decent shots early on against fleet 1, flotilla 1 over here. And flotilla 2 is getting their asses handed to them by a combination of both 2 and 3. And we are taking full broadsides, of course, from fleet 1 over here, so that sucks, but... We are taking his ships down in Fleet 2 especially really, really quickly. Our two defensive fleets, uh, two defensive ships in um, Flotilla 2, for some reason they're not actually uh, taking damage consistently. Like some of the damage is going onto our longship here. It must be their defender was chipping away at it. We've taken out their hero ship fast. And now that we've got the plus 20, um, the double ac oh no, we've only got the accuracy bonus once. I forgot we don't have anyone in the other lane. Alright, let's take the auto camera here. 
we we know for a fact from the strategic view that we've won this year. Uh, one of the nice things like that they've got is that they've got 100% accuracy from this distance. But our weapons are just way stronger. Also, we're reducing the accuracy of their supposed 100% accuracy because of the Hyperion weapons that we're using. So that also helps. If we put something in Flotilla 1 by itself, it might have died because it's just, you know, not as tough uh, by itself up there. Or I could have just put a distraction in, like, bottom lane here. Would have worked as well. Alright, cool. So we go ahead and hit you guys up like that, and we're going to send these ships up here. Oh, looks like he's running away. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, over here, I think we start going for reductions in cost. Just because got nothing better to get. Let's go ahead and get two more long ships over here. Now, what have we got headed over to us? Like, we know that it's um, one of these. It's a military one. 4,000 firepower on it. We might want to hit the repairs here just so that we don't have to deal with that later. Um, could also potentially just fly these guys back to Mira. I don't have enough uh, movement left for it. If we move right away, we can get to Mira and sort of uh, rebuild up this fleet before anything too interesting can happen. And I should be able to get over to this one. So what we want to do is, like, on the start of our turn, just immediately move ships. So, a little bit janky, a little bit not great, but what can you do sometimes? Alright, so I don't think we're actually... Let's go ahead and get the level 3 modernization first here. And get ready on the move fleets. We're going to get like a bunch of pop-ups telling us a bunch of stuff. I'm just going to keep mashing this. And since the Hisho, he'll definitely fight me here. But uh, yeah, we've managed to pull off that little swap there. Um, in this particular case, he's got, again, all beam weapons. Again, power to shields. Hit the advanced thing here. Um, we're going to want just a little bit of defenders in each of these lanes here. And we just want all of our attackers in the mid, where they're going to be able to sort of get the most damage done to this thing. Let's go ahead and take a watch of this as well. Plus 25% hull planing absorption on his ship there. We're going to be closing into mid-range where our weapons are going to be pretty effective. And then we're going to end up in short range where they're less effective again. And his are going to be 100% effective the whole time. So phase two is when our ships are going to start opening up and really causing havoc to him. This looks so much better than it did in my previous computer. Although, again, I still don't think the, these are the best looking ships. And then it just sort of like camera just clips straight through the ship as well. But, you know, whatever. We have pretty powerful sh uh, shields on our ship design here, so should be pretty capable of taking some shots from him anyway. I don't know, behemoths have always been disappointing to me. I don't find that they've ever been great in terms of like their military firepower. You just see these like, cannon broadsides firing off and you can see his shots uh, just s smashing into our shields and tearing into the hull a little bit. Such good effects. And just like the mass firepower ripping into his ship there. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I don't know, military, like even, even if it was upgraded to the Juggernaut, it's just such a disappointing ship. It barely scratched the paint on these ships here. I'm not even sure if it really got through the shields effectively. You know, it's just such um, a shame that they didn't uh, make them a little bit better. All right. That's pretty pathetic. All right. So now that we've got Genius of the Endless, our next one that we want to get is going to be Wealth of the Endless. Um, it should be pretty easy for us to like sort of get uh, Power of the Endless last, and we don't necessarily need it that badly. If we're feeling like really badly the pinch in terms of like getting happiness, then we would probably want to get that one first. But in this particular case, not super super worried about it. We are going to pick up Advanced Strike Force, even though we technically don't really need it. We just need that to make sure that we're in a better fighting position. 
Then we're going to take Wanton Communication. Um, I quite like getting War as Hobby, just in case you need that for your troops. In our case, we really are hoping that we're not going to need that, but we will get it anyway. And then we can get something like the Quadranex Fleet Shield, which would be pretty powerful. Um, we could also do something like the Quadranex Torres for the Anti-Cloaker if we really were fighting a lot of cloaked stuff there. Uh, or for the anti, uh, or for the armor or whatever. Interleave Orichalcix as well um, could potentially be pretty good in some, some circumstances, but we're not worried about any of those. We don't have enough of that resource for that to be really good. Hyperfield Generators, though, we do have enough to get Quadranex uh, Fleet Shields. So should be a pretty good choice there and this is going to be our three picks from here after we get that we're going to start working on wealth of the endless and even if other things are happening i'm not trying to respond to it with the text that we can get like we're really just sort of focusing on getting um into a stronger position and not worrying about that sort of stuff uh just continually getting more science more science more science at this point in time and, and, you know, a little bit of dust and stuff like that. We're just hyper-focused on getting to our victory condition as fast as possible without worrying about the fact that we're fighting Hisho, that they're probably going to be able to do some damage just because they'll get to some system before I can actually defend it properly or whatever. That's usually the case. Fortunately, we've got, like, this dead system here that they have to sort of land at that gives me a little bit of time to react. I haven't really headed over to here to figure out what the hell that uh, discovery is, but... I haven't really had a need to. Alright, so we've got enough for a well-being foundation. Let's figure out where it needs it most. Yeah, it's down here that needs it the most. Let's uh, just get it. I don't need the School of Geniuses actually all that much. We've only got the one planet with no one on it. Alright, and our money is actually not looking that bad right now. All right, we can add in another battle tactic here. I don't really care. Um, none of these are really good for medium range necessarily, so that's kind of the problem. I'm just gonna ignore it for now. I could probably research more uh, battle tactics, but again, we're not super interested in anything like that, even though it would make us more effective at fighting, even though there's some pretty valid reasons why you would want to do it. If you're in a situation like this one where you're just trying to get a rush to that victory condition, um, it doesn't make a ton of sense to divert too much attention to that uh, side stuff there. Um, let's just get more of this here. I was planning, like I said, on just selling some of my spare, and we were at 999 titanium. We probably have been for a little while here. Um, strategics, sell like 600 of this. It's at a pretty good selling price, 22,000. Cool. All right, adamantium could also be sold in our case here. And hyperium. Um, we'll only sell like 200 Hyperium. Uh, I'll sell 300 Hyperium actually. 12,000 and we'll sell 150 of this, something like that. All right, and that'll earn us enough money for, for basically the rest of the game, unless I have to buy a bunch of stuff, which we might. All right, this system's ecstatic already. I don't need to do anything uh, fancy for happiness here. But we can go ahead and get public private. We can get Budokai Bunkers and Tractable Defense. The other reason to get these right now is that um, we do have, of course, the opportunity to defend ourselves in ground combat just in case our opponents decide to get uppity and jump us. Which, very, very possible at this point in time. All right. Quantum Communications in one turn. All right, what's going on down here anyway? Um, I think we just do urgent. No, no, we want miners and expanded uh, mines here. Get that antimatter faster because that's a key resource right now. In fact, I should probably actually be doing that down here. I forgot to do that here as well. Kind of doesn't matter that much. All right. Could even go for the Mexic quarters, but I don't necessarily know that I care that much about the Mexic quarters. It's quite a lot of extra antimatter, but it's probably okay. All right, this whole fleet here, let's merge these guys up. And at this point in time, we can actually get another two ships per fleet here. Um, let's go ahead and do that, actually. 
getting war as hobby now. We should be just about through all these techs here, actually, pretty quickly. Just barely getting enough military to make sure that we're not the easy targets that we appear to be. I know we have also got like three ships over here, but I kind of need to make that uh, a full fleet at some point in time. Or at least I need to have the option. Keep on with this here. Just because of the fact that we're sort of aiming for second means that we're probably likely to get those, although we did lose it this time. Getting the military, it's because we we're building so many military ships and stuff like that. At this point in time, though, we are, realistically speaking, just going for science. So we're going to actually pass brains over bucks here. Um, which is kind of a weird thing to get, in all honesty. Most games, you would never get that. Losing a thousand sixty-something bucks per turn, you know what? We really don't care, if I'm totally honest with you. At 79%, we're only happy here. Um, let's actually check somewhere else first here. Let's see here. Fidel is less happy. Get this one up. And Zhu is also pretty unhappy. Let's go ahead and get that there. All right. So for now, even though we have got all this money that we're losing, we are just going to keep going for science. It really is just us trying to get to the end of the game in terms of science here before that. We have 63 turns before we run out of money and we'll be we'll have won the game well before that actually runs out. Uh, even though we're going to be increasing the amount of money that we're spending on like ships and stuff like that, not going to matter too much. Wow, I'm just not getting any unfallen uh, heroes here. All right. Or not unfallen, vaulters. I'm not getting any vaulter heroes. Um, this guy probably goes up to Zoo to get whatever the hell's going on down here sorted out. Did I somehow end up at war with these guys? Looks like they have just wandered through. I have no idea what that was. Alright. So, let's go ahead and grab just... Uh, that because we keep having food problems down here we want conscription genius down here and uh i don't know that maybe i don't know It'd be nice if we had more vaulters just from a thematic standpoint here what is he why are they doing this am i at war with these guys nope cold war okay i was wondering because like sometimes they join an alliance with another faction and just suddenly you're at war with a faction that you didn't realize you were at war with because the game's kind of a jerk that way all right, and planet down here, pretty happy, pretty good, good. Um, for now, this planet still needs a lot of stuff built, I think. Something like that ought to do. Okay, great, so we've only got uh, three more turns before we can get uh, Wealth of the Endless. And again, after that, things are going to keep accelerating. Uh, I would have thought that this guy would be helping quite a bit in terms of that. We're at minus 118 food. Cool. Um, how did that happen? Oh, I remember how that happened. Okay, so one of the things that happened was um, when we lost the policy, our food went down on Empire. So, oops. All right, well, whatever. I remember, I remember she has no like good skills to get anymore. She's already got all the good ones. Yeah, so this is why we tried to keep the ecologists in power. <laughs> Goddamn game. Alright. This sort of thing happens from time to time. It's fine. Alright. Before it becomes too big of a problem, we, like, we will probably have won the game, so... Let's see here, luxuries, we've got two of them, this will be plus 20 food. Alright, who else is at negative food? Pretty much everywhere, really. Let's see here, they've got two resource deposits. Great. Murgashi, I'm surprised these guys don't have any food. 
Uh, and there's not a lot I can do about it for these guys, so... Looks like they sort of have to tough it out. I'm surprised as well, because like we've got this guy here who's got um, the food bonus for op optimal operations. Um, there's not much I can do to increase the food production any higher. Right, well, one of the things is I could potentially try to get the approval rating up here um, a little more. Because that will actually give us a slightly bigger food production bonus, so. Alright. Well, to the Endless, this one's only going to take 8 turns, by contrast to like 15 turns that it took our uh, other one. And it's going to give us a pretty big bonus to like every single type of tech that we're going to be getting the rest of the game. Production, like literally everything that we could get. So that's all lovely. I should probably do the quest down here just to see what we can get. Can't believe this thing takes eight turns to build. God. All right, and we can get another level three city somewhere. Um, let's just check our population and uh, let's colony levels here. Uh, you're looking for a colony with a lot of population that's only level two, so Mergashi over here is looking really good for that. All right. Looks like they want to form an alliance. Now at this point in time, honestly, I could form an alliance. And what we would do is uh, once we start getting, uh, well, once we can complete the condition for the science victory, we drop out of the alliance. The reason that you do that is because the alliance interrupts the amount of um, science that you need to win. So you'd have to get a bunch of additional technologies that you don't want to have to get. Um, this sort of prevents that from being a problem. Who's this? Is this the Vodiani? No. I was trying to think of whose song that is. I think that's actually a generic song now that I think about it. I just hear it a lot because I play Zvodiany a lot. Alright. So there's not a ton I can do to make our uh, Wealth of the Endless come in much faster right now. Now you might think that you could get like all the techs and stuff like that to get uh, the stun faster. Um, what limits your technology is really antimatter, uh, since you sort of build tech based on the speed at which you get antimatter. Um, it's the sort of technology building um, resource. So if you're spending all of it and don't have enough to keep spending more than like an F Reality Institute or whatever, like which takes I think 50 antimatter to build or something like that, is just not really viable. Even if it's only 25 in all honesty, because I need it for my warships, I need it for a lot of different things. Um, most important of all is system development, which is much more powerful than any of those uh, sort of buildings that they're offering me. So that's one of the big reasons that we're not worrying about that right now. Um, I guess this over here, I don't care. Just need this last one for this. God, I do wish the AI would not do that, where it's just like, let's ask every single turn. All right. Wealth of the Endless will also kick up our uh, amount of money because it's like plus 15% to plus uh, in, uh, production of everything that you produce there. Which is a pretty bonkers bonus, if you really think about it. Or even if you don't think about it, it's just like, whatever you're producing now of everything, get 15% more of it. Alright. Looks like we can get another colony up to level 3, which is great. Um, this micro is looking pretty good here. God damn. Um, Zoo is probably the one that we pick. Alright. More science, more dust. Losing dust slower means that you can uh, go a longer number of turns before it becomes a problem. Alright, Wealth of the Endless, that's going to help us out a ton. Now all we need to do is get three technologies from this branch over here. And uh, I'm actually going to call it a video here. Um, we've managed to get quite a decent chunk from the mid-game to almost done that science victory completely. Again, we're skipping over a lot of technologies that normally we would consider super important here. In this particular case, um, I feel like we just go for chlorophyll chemistry. The reason is that it gets us this plus three, plus three food. So if I need to um, have that... Oh god, what's going on? 
Alliance Anti-Aggression Pact. Yeah, so the reason that we picked this, though, is... Oh, right. Wait, why can't I queue this? There we go. Um, because that will sort of help with our uh, food problem there. Actually, Chaotic Metallurgy is probably better for that, in all honesty. They both would be pretty good. Uh, nano Aquaculture would get me another science bonus, but we're not uh, actually getting alliances. Like I said, you could get alliances and that would be perfectly fine. This would do nothing since we don't have that, so we're really just not looking at uh, technologies for being useful or anything like that. We're just getting technologies for the sake of getting them so that we can end out the game here. Um, so anyway, though, that's going to be our video for today. Hope you found this one enjoyable, and of course, as always, I hope to see you guys all next time.